Okay. Okay, Rob, we're recording. Yeah, if it's cold. Is it cold enough in uh, South Africa? Not as yes. cold as last week. And here it's boiling, boiling hot. Huh. Uh, we, live in, we live in a world of extremes in every... <laughs> Extremism in nature, extremism in the behavior of people, politics, whatever. Extreme. We we lost we lost the balance. So the main thing that we are everybody is well, I hope. And uh, so we can, uh, uh, the Mishnah today is a little bit of uh, um, just describing 10 miracles that happen on a regular basis in, uh, in the Holy Temple and in Yerushalayim. So we can just try uh, to understand, I, I'll try to to explain what were the items they are talking about. And uh, looks to me the main uh, the main message. I couldn't get the uh, um, suggestion of to try and and uh, find a message in each of them. But I uh, like to say something which is like general about these miracles. Number one, a miracle, usually it is something that obviously unnatural, but uh, when it comes every day, you don't call it a miracle. Then you come accustomed it, then you see it as a, as a natural thing. And yet the Mishnah here said, Asara Nisim Nasura Vatenu Vivetam Yidash. I'm talking about chapter 5, Mishnah, uh, but you it can be Mishnah 6. Asara Nisim Nasura Vatenu Vivetam Yidash. Ten miracles were wrought for our forefathers in the sanctuary. But it is defined as miracles because as I said all the, what, the points, it's not a natural thing against nature. Nature, but nevertheless, it is defined as a miracle. So the, this was not once off, it was on a daily basis. It was regular, and yet they are described as miracle because this is not the natural thing that we are accustomed to. And uh, I think that uh, many, many times I mentioned the Ramban, others talking about, we know that there is what's called Nes Nistar, a hidden miracle, sometimes is Nes Galui, open miracle. But what is the whole idea of the miracle? Besides the fact here that you will see a certain benefit for what happened, but the message of a miracle to realize that what we call nature is also a miracle. This is really a lesson that we always bear in mind. We are used to, we are used to see things happen every day, but we don't realize every what we call nature, what we, uh, which we accustomed to see is a miracle. And it's being very much, I found it in a very interesting 
a statement in the Gemara that the daughter of Rabchanina ben Dosa, I have mentioned before, Rabchanina ben Dosa, he was a poor, the mother of Shabbos, his daughter said to him, Dad, <coughs> we haven't got oil to light the candles for Shabbos. As I said, he was poor, didn't have uh, oil. So he asked her if there is vinegar. Apparently, vinegar was a cheap commodity. Because vinegar was, uh, was uh, very uh, an abundance of, of wine. So wine, apparently, vinegar was cheap. So he asked her, have you got, uh, do we have a vinegar? She said, yes. So he said, okay, light vinegars. And the statement is, the one that makes uh, oil to burn, he will make <clears throat> vinegar to burn. And burn. So what is the lesson? What do we learn? We think that there is something in the oil because we are accustomed to see oil burning. We are not accustomed to see vinegar burning. But we have to realize, as Rabbi Bukhanina Benasa said, you shouldn't accept anything as just a natural thing. You have to see that whatever we see in nature is a miracle because it is done by God. So only difference between a miracle and what we call nature, <clears throat> that nature is a miracle that we are accustomed to see. I think this will be the right definition. What is nature? Nature is a miracle that we are accustomed and used to see. And everybody in his life can always say so. What happened? We are accustomed to open our eyes to whatever, whatever, we take it for granted, we walk. We are... From time to time, something that we are not used to see, something unusual. It's a miracle. So what a miracle? A miracle is to wake us up and to realize who makes a miracle? God makes a miracle. So, understand the nature is the same made, made by God. So the 10 miracles that the, the Mishnah is uh, listing here, the specific things that happen in Beis Amidash in the temple, no woman ever miscarried from the aroma of the sacred sacrificial meat. The meat was uh, brying uh, in a better village. The aroma was very nice. And the uh, woman, when he came, she was pregnant, didn't cause her to have a miscarriage. Although that obviously the smell was very attractive, but she wouldn't uh, touch it because she wasn't allowed to eat it. And yet, it didn't cause, cause any miscarriage. Velo Israel Psara Kodesh Baulam, Meolam. Some uh, meat was, <clears throat> second meat, never became putrid. So sometimes it was lying, not in the fridge, the meat after it was shechted, whatever, would be lying for two days in hot weather, not a fridge, until it was used or whatever, it ne never uh, became putrid. Hundreds of animals were slaughtered a day in 
Bes Amigdash, the Korbanot sacrifices, usually such a, a slaughtering place attracts flies. You couldn't see one fly. Velo ira keri le kohen gadol biyom ha-kipurim. Kohen Gadol, high priest, he didn't tell him what is, he writes nocturnal semen, maybe semen. It didn't happen uh, to Craig at all to be contaminated contamin contamin by semen for yet to do the job in Yom Kippur. This is the day that Craig at all, only him was supposed to do the whole uh, service we read about it in the Yom Kippur Musaf. And if he would, and it, they tried, he had to go through uh, all kinds of things to make sure that he won't have a semen. He didn't have uh, before Yom Kippur um, fed uh, meat the whole night of Yom Kippur he was kept awake by Kohanim learning with him that he should not sleep all kind of things happened and yet it was not granted that it cannot happen because the Gemara says that they used to appoint somebody, a deputy, in case the coin should become Tameh, should become impure, and were not able to do the service. And this couldn't go, Yom Kippur, without the coin at all service. So yes, they didn't just rely on the miracle. They were prepared to, to have somebody in case it would happen. And uh, the Mishnah said it never happened. But I think the message is, maybe this is what I said before, they didn't take it for granted it will not happen. Every time that it didn't happen, so in a miracle. So this, I think, gives, sharpen the, the idea. You say, you cannot rely on a miracle. A miracle was something which is unusual. Against nature, you can't rely just a miracle will happen. You have to be prepared for everything. But yet, when a miracle, op a miracle happens, open our eyes to understand that everything that we are accustomed and usually we take it for granted, it is a miracle that God performs. ולא כיבוע גשמים אש על עצי המערכה. Rains never put out the fire of the wood, wood uh, pile on the altar. It was not under, was not under cover, it was open, it was rainy days. The altar had fire going the whole time. 
and uh, usually they obviously fed the, with new wood and so on. So although it was rainy days, never the rain uh, put out the fire. The wind never overcame the column of smoke from the altar fire to deflect or, def or diffuse. In other words, there was burning, as we said, in uh, the altar, and the smoke came up. And it was like straight, like a, a pole, never moved sides. The wind would not um, inter interfere with this straight stand of the fire. Please. So you, as you can see, we are talking all what happened unnatural things which would happen in a, in other places, but in the Besamikdash, this is what happened. Nature did not did not uh, have any effect on things in the Besamikdash. Sur Baomer. The Omer, it's the second day of Pesach that they used to bring from the new grain. And uh, this was to enable using the new crops. And this was kind of a, a sacrifice. If it would be defected, it would be a big problem until they, because usually they had collected all ceremony to collect the Omer uh, in a very small or the measurement they needed, not, not the vast thing. And if it would have a defect, then they wouldn't be able to use the new crops until they bring it again. So it would be a problem, but never, never found any, uh, well, what is the translation? Nothing was ever found in the Omer or the two lo loaves, the two loaves of bread, which was brought in Shavuot, And uh, and the showbread that uh, was brought on a very, very weekly weekly basis every Friday, they had the showbread showbread spread there, and they will collect the following Friday, the next week, and replace them. And it's never read any um, defect. And not only that, like Morris says, that this Lechem uh, Apanim were fresh when they were replaced. They were fresh like they were put on on the first Friday. Om Dim Sfufim, 
ומשתחווים רווחים. בשטח, בבייס המקדש, was not such a big place. It was a limited place, and many people came, especially when came Yom Tev, Al Yale Regal, the Kiwi people came from all over. So it was a miracle when they were standing, they were so squashed. one on the top of the other. Just, you could put a, a finger uh, between them, so squat they are. But when they prayed, what does it say? The people stood pressed close together in the sanctuary, yet they bowed down and posted and prostrated themselves amid ample room. So when they had to bow down to prostrate themselves, somehow it became space. The commentators say the reason um, why there was special, 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 special thing then, because the people were bowed down, they used to pray and confess. And uh, this was a private, private thing for the individual. And therefore, for some distance, that no other people will hear what the other person says. But whatever the case is, a miracle, can you understand? Omdim tsufim omishachanim rabachim. It's like the area became stretched and the wide. ולא הזיק נחש ועקרב בירושלים מעולם. Now it even, the miracle is not only limited to the temple, to the Beis HaMikdash, to the sanctuary. It says, never did a serpent or scorpion injure, injure anyone in Yerushalayim. So why is it mentioned here? Because there's nothing to do, it seems to be there's nothing to do with the temple. And here the Mishnah only lists Nisim miracles in the temple. So they commented to say that the reason why Scorpion and the And the serpents did not did not uh, cause any trouble. This was because the sanctity from the base amigdash spread out to all Yerushalayim. Vela Amar Adam Lasaverot Saru Yamakom Shalim Yerushalayim. And no man ever said to his fellow man, there is not room enough for me to sleep the night in Yerushalayim. Obviously, we are talking about the millions of people when they came to pilgrimage and they stayed overnight. And uh, nobody complained or worried that he won't have place where to where to spend to sleep the night it's uh, in uh, 
our Rebbe say that the kindness of the residents of Yerushalayim also that they actually hosted all these visitors without any charge. So obviously this brings another uh, idea. When somebody wanted to say, nobody complained. Does mean to say that it was not a narrow or squashy, but no, nobody complained. And this is show the havershaft, the togetherness of the people, as I say, the host and the visitors and the guests, how they felt so bound. There is, uh, it reminds me, I don't remember who said, one of the rabbis in the Gemore, I think this is uh, very befitting. He said, where I and my wife were in love, so both of us, we could sleep on the edge of a sword. You know, it's in a very, very narrow place. Both of us could, could sleep there. When there was no love between us, white beds would not be able to let us uh, won't be enough for us. I think it's befitting the idea here that the bond of Am Israel was especially on Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem who hosted the other guests and so on. This is something that, especially in our days, and especially in what's happening in Eretz Israel now, I am sure that you are calling the politics, the duty, dirty politics, and the, the ugly, how the disunity and hatred in between the different groups, right, left, religious, secular, and so on, something that we never, never um, experience during the 75 years of the state of Israel. Yes, we are disagreement. And that's fine. Nobody, everybody has to agree that there will be disagreement. Everybody thinks differently. But nevertheless, you can disagree and be bonded, bonded with the other person. You feel brotherhood. I think that this may be that that is a miracle that in Yerushalayim nobody felt that he has no place where to sleep. Say a miracle because yes, in nature everybody has got ego. Everybody he looks for himself, after himself, and yet the idea is to, to make the bond. 
that the love should be between people. And if there is a love, as I said, what Big Mother said, then you can always find a place together with your body, with your person that you love. But there is no love, then everything is not enough any space to behold to all the, the people. So I want to finish here because I had to still run to a certain meeting. So the, I think what the message that I said, we discussed miracle via via vis a vis nature. But the point is that we are talking about all this which happened in Yerushalayim or Bet Amigdash, this miracle, this is um, something which above nature because of the sanctity of the sanctuary. And we have to realize the dimension because we always think in physical dimension. So there is a spiritual dimension, which was in Besamikdash, and this was experienced with, uh, uh, with these things, which were unnatural and uh, miraculous. So with this, I want to finish tonight. I want to say, uh, to wish you that you should have uh, an easy fast, Tisha B'Av. Hopefully, we pray that this Tisha B'Av, we should turn very quickly into a Yom Tov, as we are by the Prophet, the, the days of, of fast days, One minute, you know, the, time, the time of Mashiach would uh, become holidays. I don't know if on the Gemara Shiur on Thursday night, uh, maybe Sam find out if we'll find out. Thank you. the fast, if they... Yeah, uh, so our fast here finishes quite early. I don't know about in Israel. I'm not sure the exact time, but I'll just check it, but I'm sure it's earlier than in Israel. Yeah, it, 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 the first the first uh, finish is about 20 past 8, which is your 20 past 7. So about the 9 o'clock, uh, which usually we meet for the show, should be after the fast, and I hope that I should be able already to take the fast. Hopefully that, uh, that will fast in Mir Tashem, because... Uh, the, well, we'll it, find out from we'll find out from the find people. out if the people Thank are you. still wanting. Yeah, no, I'm sure there would be, but uh, let's find out. Thank you. Okay, so I wish you Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat and Shabbat as Shalom. I say, they say in, in South Africa, um, I have to say, uh, in Thomas. Whatever, well, well, <laughs> well, well, the first, okay. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Brian Brom and uh, Audrey, they had a grandchild. Brian Brom, I <laughs> And I'll be coming yeah, to you. Brian Brom had a grandchild. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 found me, he found me on the day that he was born. I hope to see him. He's coming. Uh, and he's they here. Got he's here. Yeah, and they're going to be having Zero, an event. Ah, they're going to have an event next week. They're going to have the event, which is already told me and uh, invited me with my children and family to come to this event. He does. He, he, he said he arranged the event on the fifteenth of uh, Av uh, on our wedding anniversary. Wow. Chuba 
Amazing. Okay. So I'll, I'll send the link for those. If you know anybody who's interested, I'll send the link as well. Um, if you know anybody in Israel who's, who's interested in joining that event, it's going to be very special. Okay. So I'm uh, closing because I have to run, as I told you, to another meeting. So I wish you all well and a good Shabbos. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.